Okay, you remember we were speaking about the, in the previous uh, video about certain types of, of, of schematics where the battery is not present as a symbol on the schematic. Well, over here you have part of that also available. When you see, whenever you see a fuse, whenever you see ignition, see, or you see the fuse block, that means it's going to the, the, the battery voltage. Whenever you see it says hot at all times, that means it's going to battery voltage. Now, not necessarily all the time. You could have a fuse going to a switch also. So it might not be going necessarily directly to the battery, but it might be going through a different component. But whenever you see fuse block under it, over here, hot all times, automatic thing is going to the battery. You know it's 12 volts. Now, Here's the symbol for the battery. Here we didn't have the symbol for the battery. You have to assume it, you have to infer it from knowledge. Here we have it. Why can't we draw a line? Here's the, start, the ignition switch. Why can't we draw a line <clears throat> all the way from here to the battery? We could, but that would make it, that would make the, the, the schematic too difficult to read. So what do they do? <clears throat> Instead of telling you, hey, Here's a battery symbol over here. They tell you hot at all times. Remember, it's going to the battery. We, you don't have a wire going from here to here on the schematic, but it is going there for those purposes. Try to make it as simple as, as possible. So now that we have this, we have a starter relay like we always have. We got to get to the starter motor. We got to get 12 volts to him at no cost. There's a thick wire over here. That black thick wire that carries all the amps, 200, 300 amps, maybe even more. As you can see over here, through this symbol over here, before this happens, what has to happen? These solenoids have to be activated. In order for this to happen, what else has to happen? This switch has to happen. In order for this switch to has to happen, what else has to happen? This has to be activated. In order for this to be activated, what does have to be activated? The park neutral position switch. In which position? Either park, it tells you, either park or neutral. And for this to happen, what else has to happen? The ignition switch has to be in the start position. The fact that I have, if you would measure it over here, 12 volts, what does that tell you? From a diagnosing st standpoint. Well, it tells me, look at the, uh, the symbol. We went over this one time. I made a couple of videos on this, so that's why I'm not going to go into detail too much. Just a, a troubleshooting. The fact that I have 12 volts over here at 87 tells me this is activated. What else does it tell me? It tells me this fuse is good. This, this maxi fuse, this big fuse at 40 amps. Also, what does it tell me also? This battery fuse, the fuse holder... 175 amp fuse is also good. So from one measurement, look at the schematic, where it's coming from, and look at the other components and derive, a, derive an analyzation and a conclusion to your theory. Like I just said, I have 12 volts here. How do I know the fuses are good? I back probe. I go back up and I say, this is turned on. That means that this fuse is good, this fuse is good. So right away I took out one tooth and the wiring, of course, two things out of two things out of the circuit. There might be a problem, and I assume with that measurement that they are good. What about this side? We said we need 12 volts on one side. Here's the 12 volts. We need what on the other side? A computer to give us zero volts. Do you see a computer here? You see no computer, but what, what do you see? You see a wire, a black wire, with G102. What does that mean? It means it is a physical ground. Ground distribution schematics and wiring system. It is a physical ground. So no computer is involved here, like the other video that I made for the compressor relay. Okay, fine. But when you go back probe, let's back probe, park neutral switch has to be in the right position, but the ignition switch also has to be turn to the start position if it's in any other position there is no connection here so look what we look what we achieved from one measurement
Look what we achieved. The video that I made one time about starter motor and fuel uh, and fuel pump relays to measure it in circuit. You don't pull this out. There's no reason to pull this out. I know people jump it all the time. There's no reason. 87, I went here and I measured 12 volts. Now my problem is here. Or my problem is this one, this thick wire. Maybe the voltage drop is too excessive. You should get close to zero volts on a voltage drop. Maybe 0.1 volt. Point two, you can't push it to point five or point six. It's much too much because of Ohm's law. But I don't want to get that technical. But anyway, eighty-seven. Putting my probe here, my voltmeter. Here's my voltmeter. Put, putting it and measuring eighty-seven. Look how much I took out of the equation. And I'm going. I'm repeating the same thing. But because of the comments that I received and the emails that I received, it is a it a it is a very very important point to make. How do I measure this? The the if this ignition switch is good or any switch. How do I measure a, a park neutral position switch that's on transmission? How do I measure these places when it is hard to get to and I have to take things apart, and it is hard to access them? How do I? Where do I go? Where do I go? Go right here. Go to the top of the relay. If this measures 12 volts here, what does that tell you? That tells me I'm connected to, to the battery. Through what? Through the switch, through the fuse. So the ignition switch must be good. This fuse must be good. And then where is it going to? 12 volts. Here's 12 volts. So with two measurements, one measurement the 12 volts here, the other measurement of 12 volts told me one switch is good, right? A fuse is good. The wiring, of course, is good. But most of all, the ignition switch is good. And the fuse is good. So four, one, two, three, four. Four things were, t uh, were good by just this one measurement. Now we have to worry about zero volts in the other side. But we measure 12 volts here. What does that tell me? All of this is good. If this was not good, if the ignition switch would not be good, if I had 12 volts over here and I had zero volts over here, that tells me maybe the park neutral switch, maybe the start switch, ignition switch, or maybe the fuse. So the fact that I go over here and I measure over here <clears throat> 12 volts tells me the ground is good. All the fuses are good. Both fuses are good. Again, park switch, park neutral switch is good. Ignition switch is good. When I <clears throat> crank it, fuse is good. <clears throat> and this fuse is good. So with one measurement, I took out six, seven components with that one measurement. That's how you do it in, in troubleshooting. If I would have a module over here like we had in the other one, a computer giving it a ground, and I measure 12 volts, would the computer ground be good absolutely i cannot have 12 volts over here <clears throat> if the fuse is not good or if this fuse is not good if this is not activated if this is not activated where current is flowing and making this a uh, contest close i cannot have 12 volts over here that's why i always stress go to this point go to go to this point go to 87 Measure in circuit. This is the most important important one <clears throat> to measure. If you have 12 volts over here, <clears throat> you achieved everything you needed to on this. Now, what are you going to concentrate on? I'm going to concentrate on this. I'm going to concentrate on the starter motor. I'm going to concentrate on this 12 volts. Make sure at terminal B, I have 12 volts. Make sure at terminal S, the solenoids, I have 12 volts over here. This is 12 volts here. What's the other side? This is ground. The other side should be zero volts, right? And M should be 12 volts. So here you have it, 12 volts. So B, 12 volts. M, motor, 12 volts. Over here, S, solenoid, 12 volts. The other side should be ground. The housing of it. So that that's how you troubleshoot the reason i went over this again was because there's many comments about confusing how these these schematics are again this is the dealership 
This is a dealership manual, and they are difficult. Like I told you, they often ask me what the books are. Three manuals. This is over 800 pages as I work there. But if you, if you wanted to order this, over $250 from this year, and then they get even more expensive as the years go up. So obviously, unless you're really in in the industry, in the profession, to get such a manual like this, obviously, it's it's too much. Just settle for the all data or Google or things like that to get your wiring diagram. It has a lot of information, as you can see, but too costly, unless you're in the profession. So for that comment, when you ask me, what about these these manuals? It's too much money and too technical. So. Anyway, I hope this was informative how to troubleshoot. Thanks for watching, and go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, my other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Well, you see, I actually use the clamp meter, and I use the relays, and I measure the relays in the circuit. No matter if it's a fuel pump relay, starter motor relay, it has to be with the relay in the circuit. That is the most accurate reading you will ever get. So, like I said, weather will be hopefully better in the Northeast, and we could go out, we can make more videos hands-on, so you understand the practical. Thanks.